Okay. Yeah. But uh, uh, but USA Today called the the city's draconian security measures. They called it draconian. They closed bridges to New Jersey. They created massive yeah, traffic USA boxes. Today said that. Yeah. Wow. Uh, they I'll they shut that. down streets, towed cars, restricted public transit, mm -hmm. public offices closed for days. Major overreaction. And then you've got restaurant owners spending. One guy spent seventy five hundred dollars on food that he couldn't sell. Yep. And another stop uh, smoothie shop was down fifty percent. So. And that's just a small sampling of what was oh, said. Oh, well, I mean, when you go to Philly, more than any other city, because, you know, uh, Times Square was still alive and well. People were going in and out, uh, buying food, same thing, mm -hmm. in Washington, D.C. But when you go to Philly, you have these miles of barricades, whether they're the concrete barricades or the uh, metal fencing going all the way around. Businesses were open. You know, a lot of them people chose— People couldn't get to them. Yeah, a lot of them chose to shut down because they recognized nobody's coming. But even when you had all these seas of people coming down the street— People would keep walking, but like, oh, they must be close anyway because the Pope is here. So, yeah, just like I can understand this guy trying to be prepared for that, but, you know, he had no way to uh, have people get to his facility. Just like uh, David and myself, we found it very difficult to navigate in the city. At one point, just to get to the street where our hotel was, we had to wear a wristband. We had to have right. permission to go back in the area where our hotel was. Major security overkill, uh, Homeland Security exercise, I think. It's just totally ridiculous. Thanks for going out there covering the Pope. I mean, I know it, was, it wasn't the easiest thing to do, but you know, you and David Knight got in the trenches and you definitely deserve kudos. And I think we uncovered a lot. We uncovered a lot of the Pope's agenda. And uh, you know, anything else you wanna say on that? Well, I just want people to realize that, you know, this is, you know, somebody coming from a foreign country and I'm not knocking him because he's Catholic or anything like that. But we have President Obama in Washington, D.C., as I said before. You got the U.N., all these other world leaders in New York. But for one guy, they shut down a city. Like I said, it was worse than D.C. It was worse than New York. It was completely ridiculous. Uh, it didn't have the financial benefits. That right. actually had a very crippling effect. The only people who made a payday was the military-industrial complex. And those working overtime. Yes. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, we'll be back with more on the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm going to have Joe Biggs in studio as well to break down what's going on with these new gun uh, surveys that they're sending out to people up in North Austin. Stay tuned. All right, we're going to cut this segment short because I understand we have an urgent phone call right now from Admiral Akbar of the Rebel Alliance. Admiral, thanks for joining us. You know, we were just talking about the internet kill switch and Barack Obama, you know, he just said that he thinks we should hand power of the internet over to the federal government. I think that sounds like a scary thought. And Obama says it will be used fairly and distributed equally. What do you say to that? It's a trap. What happened? Do we just, do we lose them? Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash, you're gonna feel really bad afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best 
formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. a protest and this is a riot if you can't tell the difference then you are part of the problem infowars.com one more item on the pope before we move on and this has to do with sexual abuse in uh, i guess religion organized religion uh, anyway, this is out of the Huffington Post. Pope Francis meets with survivors of sexual abuse. Pope Francis met with five survivors of sexual abuse in Philadelphia on Sunday morning. It was the last day of his trip, incidentally enough. Uh, three female and two male survivors of abuse by clergy, teachers, or relatives were part of a meeting, each accompanied by a family member or supporter. God weeps for sexual abuse of children, Francis said during the speech. Uh, these cannot be maintained in secret. I commit to a careful oversight to ensure that youth are protected and that all are responsible will be held accountable. Now, and interestingly enough, while I was interviewing Leo Zagami, he was talking about how at the train station in Rome, they set up, they had uh, fake ambulances set up there, and they were actually taking Romanian orphan kids that they were finding at the train station. I guess they hang out there and pick pockets or do whatever. They were taking these kids, putting them in these ambulances, and driving them into Vatican City for late night parties with priests. So he needs to start at the Vatican. That is where the sexual abuse investigation needs to go, Mr. Pope, sir. Moving on to a Daily Mail article. Former House Speaker Dennis Hastert negotiating a guilty plea over charges he paid $3.5 million in hush money to cover up sexual contact with the mail. That's right. It doesn't just happen in uh, the clergy or in organized religion or in churches. It also happens within our own government, and we've detailed this exhaustively at Infowars.com. But here it is with Dennis Hastert, former Republican speaker, who was the longest uh, serving Republican speaker, House uh, Speaker of the House in history. Um, uh, in, a May indictment says Hastert agreed to pay $3.5 million to someone identified only as individual A to hide past misconduct. It has been claimed that individual A is a victim of sexual abuse that Hastert was attempting to silence. It is believed that uh, the individual is linked to his days as a high school teacher. That's right. He taught wrestling and I, I believe was a teacher at a high school for a number of years. Uh, another possible victim has emerged. The sister of a student at Yorkville High School told ABC News that in, in June that Hastert had sexually abused her brother, who is now deceased. And uh, Stephen Reinhold was a student equipment manager when Hastert worked at Yorkville High School in Illinois from 1965 to 1981. So 
There you go. It, it's always the people that work around children that you need to be most wary of. It was Jerry Sandusky and the Penn State family, of, and that was all covered up. You know, Joe Paterno was probably in on the cover-up. We don't know because he ended up dying right after all the allegations came out. But Sandusky is serving jail time. He was caught in the shower with boys. There's allegations that high-paying donors were flown in to have sex parties with little boys all at Penn State. That's the stuff we need to worry about. That's the stuff, if the Pope's really serious, we'll see people's heads starting to roll very quickly having to deal with child abuse. Now on to some market news. NASDAQ completes Death Cross Grand Slam. The NASDAQ Composite has produced a Death Cross chart pattern on Monday, joining three other major market indexes which have produced similar bearish chart patterns over the past couple months. A Death Cross appears when a 50-day moving average crosses below the 200-day moving average, an event that many chart watchers view as marking the spot a shorter-term correction morphs into a longer-term downtrend. And if you take a look at MarketWatch, they're reporting the NASDAQ is down 142 points for the day. A, uh, that's a percentage of 3.04%. Now, at InfoWars, we had a lot of people coming on, a lot of market analysts all talking about how September, October were going to be some really volatile months, and we reported it as that. And then other people came out and said, well, when this super Shemitah happens, it's going to just be decimating. Well, we haven't seen that yet, but we are seeing substantial downturns occurring in the market. So be looking out for that. Now, I want to end tonight's uh, segment here with... Another Daily Mail article, witnesses capture video of Virginia cop taking down a man with a stun gun who isn't resisting arrest. Let's go to that video now. And that video comes right on the heels of the FBI making the announcement that they're going to collect more public information about police shootings of civilians. That is definitely some good news. This is information we do need to see out there. Now, coming up, we're going to have an interview with Joe Biggs where we look at a troubling uh, survey that was put out by a local school here in the Austin area. And David Knight has a report about a cab driver in Philadelphia telling us what's wrong with the United States and how to fix it. But first, here's a report from John Bowne about how human rights are down, but beheadings are up. 2015, a banner year for beheadings in Saudi Arabia. According to Amnesty International, beheadings have surpassed 175 at a rate of one every two days. Many had hoped that new Saudi King Salman would have diminished the brutality. Instead, he has accelerated it. The Independent reports, the kingdom killed 102 convicted criminals in the first six months of 2015 alone, putting it on course to beat its 1995 record number for the calendar year of 192. Those killed included children under the age of 18 at the time of the offense and disabled people. In fact, the numbers have climbed to such a high level, the Saudis have placed a job posting for eight new executioners. 28% of those that faced the executioner's blade were due to drug offenses, adultery, witchcraft, and of course, sorcery. Many of those executed are not given legal representation and confess to their crimes after breaking under torture. The bodies of the executed are regularly displayed in public squares where the corpse is tied to a bag with the head of the violator inside of it, something the United Nations and Amnesty International have long demanded an end to. 21-year-old Ali Mohammed Bakir al-Nimr faces crucifixion and beheading for attending a demonstration against the Saudi regime when he was just 17 years old. Well then, America and the rest of the representatives of the modern world must be furious with Saudi government for these blatant displays of medieval barbarism. Wrong. Saudi Arabia has been chosen to head an important UN human rights panel, and State Department Deputy Spokesman Mark Toner responded with enthusiasm. Toner said, we would welcome it. We're close allies. Close allies. According to witness testimony to the classified 28 pages of the 9-11 report. Ladies and gentlemen, the Saudi government runs al ISIS, runs al-Qaeda. Does that mean that sometimes these groups don't attack Saudi Arabia to demand more goodies and more power and more weapons? Absolutely. But that's the real problem. There it is in the New York Times. Convicted terrorists claim Saudis funded al-Qaeda and knew of plots at Down Air Force One. It's in the 28 pages that Saudi Arabia was running the hijackers and they were in Saudi intelligence. Yeah, but let's go further than that. Under Clinton and Bush, they protected those hijackers when the FBI tried to stop them, when they were training, when people at the flight schools were suspicious. But what about how at least five of the 19 trained at U.S. military bases and were given spy training? The head of the Defense Language School, Colonel Stephen Butler, 
went public a week after 9-11 in the San Jose Mercury News and said, I don't know what's going on, but we train these guys at our bases. Muhammad Atta was in my class. Something's wrong. Of course.